The naval battle of Sisychus took place in 410 BC during the Peloponnesian War. In the battle, an Athenian fleet commanded by Alcibiades, Thrasybulus, and Theramenes routed and completely destroyed a Spartan fleet commanded by Mindarus. The victory allowed Athens to recover control over a number of cities in the Hellespont over the next year. In the wake of their defeat, the Spartans made a peace offer, which the Athenians rejected. Chapter 1, Prelude In the wake of the Athenian victory at Abydus in November 411 BC, the Spartan admiral Mindarus sent to Sparta for reinforcements and began working with the Persian satrap, Parnabazus to plan for a new offensive. The Athenians, meanwhile, were unable to follow through on their victory, since the depletion of the Athenian treasury precluded any major operations. Thus, by the spring of 410 BC, Mindarus had built a fleet of eighty ships, and with the support of Parnabazus's troops, besieged and took the city of Sisychus. The Athenian fleet in the Hellespont withdrew from its base at Sestos to Cardia to avoid the superior Spartan force, and ships under Alcibiades, Theramenes, Thrasybulus that had been dispatched, to raise money combined with this force, creating a fleet of eighty-six ships. This fleet, along with a force of land troops under Shirias, set out to the Hellespont to challenge Mindarus. Chapter 2, The Battle The Athenian force entered the Hellespont, and, passing the Spartan base at Abydus by night so as to conceal their numbers, established a base on the island of Proconesus, just northwest of Sisychus. The next day, they disembarked Shirias's force near Sisychus. The Athenian fleet then divided, with twenty ships under Alcibiades advancing towards Sisychus while two other divisions under Thrasybulus and Theramenes lurked behind. Mindarus, seeing an opportunity to attack what appeared to be a vastly inferior force, set out towards them with his entire force. Alcibiades's force fled, and Mindarus's ships gave chase. When both forces had gotten well out from the harbour however, Alcibiades turned to face Mindarus, and Thrasybulus and Theramenes appeared with their forces to cut off his retreat. Mindarus, seeing the trap, fled in the one open direction, towards a beach south of the city, where Parnabazus was located with his troops. The Spartan fleet suffered losses in the flight, and reached the shore with the Athenians right behind them. Alcibiades's troops, leading the Athenian pursuit, landed and attempted to pull the Spartan ships back out to sea with grappling hooks. The Persian troops under Parnabazus, however, entered the fighting on the shore and began to drive the Athenians, who were outnumbered and fighting against opponents on firmer ground, into the sea. Seeing this, Thrasybulus landed his force as a diversion and ordered Theramenes to combine his troops with those of Shirias and join the battle. For a time, Thrasybulus and Alcibiades were both driven back by superior forces, but the arrival of Theramenes and Shirias turned the tide, the Spartans and Persians were defeated, and Mindarus was killed. All the Spartan ships were captured save for those of the Syracusan allies, who burned their ships as they retreated. Chapter 3, Aftermath In the wake of this dramatic victory, the Athenians had full control of the waters of the Hellespont. The next day, they took Sisychus, which surrendered without a fight. An intercepted letter from the Spartan troops, stranded near Sisychus reads the ships are gone. Mindarus is dead. The men are starving. We know not what to do. Demoralized by the devastation of their fleet, the Spartans sent an embassy to Athens seeking to make peace, the Athenians rejected it. At Athens, the oligarchic government that had ruled since 411 gave way to a restored democracy within a few months of the battle. An expeditionary force under Thrasyllus was prepared to join the forces in the Hellespont. This force, however, did not depart until over a year after the battle, and although the Athenians eventually recaptured Byzantium and resumed collecting tribute from Chalcedon, they never truly pressed the advantage that Sisychus had given them. Largely, this was a result of financial inability, even after the victory, the Athenian treasury was hard-pressed to support large-scale offensive operations. Meanwhile, the Spartans, with Persian funding, quickly rebuilt their fleet, 
and would go on to undermine the Athenian advantage. Athens would win only one more naval battle in the war, at Argynusi, and their defeat at Aegispotami in 405 BC would bring the war to a close. Although Sisychus was a dramatic victory for the Athenians, the Spartans were eventually able to recover their strength and end the war in their favor, with the surrender of Athens and its allies six years later. Chapter 4, Sources Diodorus Siculus, Library Kagan, Donald. The Peloponnesian War ISBN 0670032115. Xenophon? Hellenica. Translated by Henry Graham de Kins, via Wikisource.